James, from Product, by Mark Ravenhill. So there's a knife, and your eyes widen as you see the knife, and he's pulled it out from under his... The knife comes out from... He's wearing a, a robe. He's a tall fellow, a tall dusky fellow, and you want to call out. You're about to call out. He's got a knife, the tall dusky fellow has got a knife, but something, a decision, a small but important beat you don't call out. Why? You open the overhead baggage container. Your luggage is Gucci, Gucci are in. It's going to be fabulous. You open the luggage container and there's a mat, a small oriental prayer mat rolled up very neat. Hold on your face. Surprise, apprehension maybe? I just want you to play it. Ladies and gentlemen, could I advise you to switch off all electrical goods? You look down at the mobile and something is triggered inside you. A chord of emotion resonates inside you and we see, ah, Amy is wounded. There is a wound and it's something about the mobile. It's something about the, it's a narrative hook. You look at the dusky fellow and the smell is so different. And do you know what you want to do? Do you know what you want to do? You want to reach out for the knife. You want to feel the weight of the blade in your hand. And then you want to thrust it into him. In and out and in and out and in and out until there is blood. There is blood shooting from that dusky frame of his. And the blood is shooting over you. And you're more blood than face. And you want to call out. This is for the towers. This is for civilization. This is for all of us, you bastard. But you don't say that. You don't do that. That's an interior monologue. Can you play that? I want you to play that with your eyes. Can you play that with your... <laughs> well, yes, of course you can. Of course you can. I love your work. Demetrius, from A Midsummer Night's Dream, by William Shakespeare. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this, their purpose hither to this wood, and I, in fury, hither followed them. Fair Helena, in fancy following me, but my good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia, melted as the snow, seems to me now as the remembrance of an idle god, which in my childhood I did dote upon, and all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and pleasure of mine eye is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia. But like in sickness did I loathe this food. But as in health, come to my natural taste. Now I do wish it. Love it. Long for it and will forevermore be true to it.